Hello friends, welcome to the channel. I hope you're well and thriving. It's your monk here. Today I'm just going to talk about a few general things um, and I hope that uh, your practice is going well. I want to reiterate that the practice is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Right? So there's something that um, I just had recently had a live stream and I was trying to explain to people because I get a lot of questions, a lot of questions all the time from different corners of the globe asking me a lot of things and um, generally in the west what we do is we read a lot of books uh, we have all the, the buddhist canon written in in english uh, which we're quite fortunate to have but we also got to consider like uh, in the time of the buddha there was no books and uh, when the buddha uh, passed on to parinibban when when he left the body when the chitta left the body for quite some time, there were no books. So what uh, the monks did um, to uh, preserve the teachings was to chant them, to memorize them, and then chant them every day. And that's how it was uh, basically spread and uh, hand, handed down was by memory, by rope. And the teachings were, were um, committed to the mind, to memory, right, to begin with. Now, when you read a book, it's very different to chanting. It's a, it's a whole different experience. And also, when we're reflecting on the words, it's not necessarily important to reflect on a lot of literature. For example, um, when we read, right, when we read a book, uh, how many times do we drift off? Does one drift off during the page and then come back to consciousness and lock in? Because the sati goes in and out when we're reading, so let alone many many pages so are you really picking up all the information whereas when you when you're sitting down to concentrate and meditating and you reflect on you reflect on say one phrase for example you reflect on anicca which is impermanence and you look at that and you look at all phenomena there's a lot there already there's a lot there to to uh, comprehend already i mean comprehending dukkha there's a lot to comprehend so the, the problem is, is that we try to get a lot of information, but we don't digest it. Um, it stays in, in the <clears throat> intellectual realm, not in the, in, in the critical factory, but it doesn't get committed to the wisdom, to the wisdom faculty, to the knowing faculty. And chitta being distracted, when we're in the intellectual faculty, we're not concentrating, we haven't gone past that, we're not sitting in uh, right concentration. So the mind's quite distracted, and so our absorption is not not very good. So the idea of con of concentration is to get into a level of absorption where you can absorb um, many many uh, I guess many, uh, many dharmas. Where you can understand many many things. So when you're in the in the intellectual level, right, trying to uh, decipher information, that's one level. But we need to go deeper than that. So Coming back to what I said before about in Buddha's time there were no books. It was just said and one heard and one reflected. So this is this part is definitely missing. All right. So um, instead of read, like reading is okay. I, I'm not bagging reading, but I mean horses for courses, tools, tools for for the right jobs. Like uh, you know, there's tools for different um, for different functions. And reading has a function because at least intellectually you start to get awoken and you start to realize certain things. But essentially what we need to do is commit it to the wisdom faculty, commit it deep inside the concentration into some idea. And this is really, really important when you're sitting down to meditate, for example. There's different kinds of meditation. One is uh, focusing uh, awareness of the breath, which that in itself is a huge, huge bone that you so when we're trying to get into a mantra or we're trying to even concentrate on Buddha, on uh, remembering the Buddha's life, for example, and what the Buddha did, or we're trying to uh, reflect on death, for example, there's a lot there already. So the problem is, is that we're trying to get a lot in our plate, but then we don't eat it all. We, we, we throw it away. So the idea is to put on your plate what you can eat and digest and digest it very well. Right and eat 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 through it slowly. In other words, when we're talking about dharma, right, it's really not important to know every single sutta in the book. It's not important to know every single teaching that there is. The important thing is to know a teaching well, 
right? So whichever teaching you decide to do, learn it, right? You reflect on it and learn it really deeply and really well before you move on to the next one. Because here we have, um, I noticed particularly with Western uh, Buddhists, the, the desire to constantly flick through each, uh, uh, each discourse, just go to the next one, go to the next one, without really reflecting deeply on the one discourse. The one, many people are enlightened <clears throat> when the Buddha gave one discourse. So let's consider the first five arahants, the first five disciples of the Buddha. They just heard two discourses, right? So by the end of the Anattalakana discourse, right, the characteristics of not-self, five, five uh, beings uh, realized arahanthood, right? Realized the cessation of dukkha. Okay, so they only had to hear two discourses and they were in deep in reflection, right, from the Buddha himself, although that's, you know, a pretty rare occurrence, right? It won't happen to all of us, but uh, only two discourses were needed and so many other arahants heard one sentence to enlighten or they heard one discourse. Uh, for example, the fire discourse. The fire discourse, um, I think more than a thousand uh, disciples of the Buddha were able to enlighten after hearing that one discourse, for example, right? <clears throat> so the idea is not to feed yourself too much information. The idea is to get whatever information you got and, and, and learn it well. And this also applies in everything we do in life. If you consider, for example, learning a trade, you know, when you start learning a trade, you can't build a house immediately, right? So in other words, you, you try to get, you buy all the tools and you try to build a house from scratch, and it's very difficult. First, you have to learn how to do certain things. And there's a lot of things that have to be learned step by step, right? And you have to learn them well. Otherwise, you're going backwards all the time. Once it's built, everything starts to fall apart and you've got to go and fix it, right? So the idea is to understand that too much um, all the time is not necessarily a good thing. Like constantly reading and reading and reading, going out through the eye and just in, absorbing it intellectually. There's only so much information you're able to retain. Um, there's only so much information you're able to uh, commit to memory as well, right? Unless, of course, you're a rare individual like Ananda who was able to memorize, to remember all of Buddha, basically all of Buddha teachings in the second half of Buddha's life, of uh, in the last 20 years of Buddha's life. But even so, you know, there's not many individuals that can do that. And even then, he didn't enlighten immediately. It took him some time um, to enlighten. And then, he, he, as he laid down, he just let go of everything. He let go of everything, Venerable Ananda, and then finally he realized. So letting go, letting go is a big thing. Learning how to abandon the cause of the, the Samudaya, Samudaya, which I talked about in my previous video, the origination, the cause of the cause of Dukkha, learning to abandon that itself is enough. That's a lot already. That, you know, so be careful of trying to, you know, eat too much and then not absorb it, not digest it, and just continuously get indigestion and wasting, wasting, wasting the food, having to throw it out. The teaching is the same. So you consider anything like painting or learning an art form or learning how to uh, be a carpenter or learning how to be an actor or a singer. You, it, it, there's, there's a lot of steps that are required in order to master the craft, in order to become really diligent at the craft. You can't be, you can't be told how to do everything in the first week and then all of a sudden you, you, know, you can do. So, I mean, I guess some individuals can do that, right? They've got certain abilities or capabilities. But in general, for the average bloke like myself, it, no, I, it just can't be, uh, it, it's, it's a bit impossible to do that for me uh, personally, right? For example, when, when you sit down and concentrate and you set your mind onto just a nichang, just impermanence, and you look at how deep that rabbit hole can go, there's not really need to go any further at that point. It's just really get to know that subject. And do it deep before you go on to the next one and that's also a discipline in itself committing yourself to saying okay I'm not going to go any further until I understand this thing right or I understand so you, you pick something to reflect on and you reflect on that only like in some traditions they'll chant certain mantras over and over and over again because it's you need to chant it that many times in order to understand it 
right? And it's like any skill, you have to repeat it over and over again to get to, to not only get good at it, but to commit it to memory and to remember. For example, playing a guitar, the basics, every advanced guitarist, every guitarist has to always warm up on the basics to some extent, right? And you get to a certain diligence, you get to a certain, I guess, uh, level where, or uh, ability where you don't have to anymore. But for many years before that, before that occurs, for most people anyway, there's, uh, uh, there's going over the fundamentals over and over and over and over again. So this is why it's not a sprint. And this is why it's a marathon and, and it needs to be a constant patient perseverance. And uh, the Buddha said Kanti is one of the um, you know, highest, uh, one of the biggest virtues that are needed in order to conquer this path, to conquer yourself, is patient perseverance. It's the, the, the constant you know, ability, the, co the constant focus and diligence of continuously keeping at it, keeping at it, keeping at it, keeping at it until you finally get there, until you finally break through. You know, just meditating once or twice on something or just practicing a little bit and not getting the answer immediately is hardly a way to, to, to practice, right? So patience, you know, the Buddha himself talked about how subtle the Four Noble Truths are. The Buddha himself talked about how difficult and hard to comprehend Paticca Samuppada is, right? Uh, he said it was deep and hard to comprehend, very subtle. So if the Buddha is standard, is saying it, that's hard to understand, then then really for for the average Joe like us, like what chance do we got? You know, do we have? <laughs> so the idea is also to remain humble and understand your own, be truthful to your own shortcomings and truthful to your own uh, ability, and 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 go from there, right? So the idea is to stick at it. You know, you don't get the answer today, never mind. Keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. And then eventually, hopefully, you'll win, you, you know, you'll win the prize. You, you know, you'll win the race in that sense, okay? So uh, moving on, um, you know, I've reopened my Telegram channel uh, for those who uh, want to join that and, and chat. And um, I'm trying to do live streams on that. Although I prefer to try to develop, uh, for those that don't know and for the new uh, subscribers or haven't heard we I created along with some other people we created a, a website called Buddhist for truth Buddhists for truth which you can see in the description and um, we're trying to develop a site for Buddhists uh, from an online Buddhist site uh, which uh, people can where there's a forum and you can post <coughs> articles and uh, we're, we're slowly developing the media the video aspect but that's really difficult and that requires a lot of uh, funding and stuff like that. So, you know, step by step, we're in, in the very early stages. But I prefer to work on that website than any other app or try to have uh, like uh, like private apps and all that kind of thing because I also don't think they respect our privacy very well. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you want to join that, and uh, you know, please have a look at the description. Thank you for the new subscribers. I appreciate the subscribers. Remember, I can't do live streams um, on YouTube until I have at least a thousand subscribers. So if you want to consider that, if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Um, I think doing live streams uh, would be very beneficial um, and I think um, I would benefit from it and I think others and I can share more as well. So other, other people will benefit from it as well. So I hope this little short video uh, encourages you to stick at it, right? To stick at it. Uh, don't give up. Uh, you know, when when you get into a situation where you hit a brick wall and it doesn't, and things don't seem to be progressing, that's the time to really put down, put your foot down, and keep going at it. Keep going at it. Keep going at it. Um, you know, it's okay to question others. Like, there's one thing as well before I go here. Right in the Buddha talks about in one of the suttas that someone who asks a lot of questions is intelligent. Okay, so most people when they when they read that one, they start asking a lot of questions. There's certain questions there. I guess there's no such thing as a um, a dumb question, right? But in essence, though, when you're asking questions, the the idea is that you do the work first to try to find out yourself first, like. You try to do everything you can to work the, the puzzle out yourself. And then when you can't, 
When you're at your wit's end, then you ask the question. That's the best time to ask the question, not just to pull it out of the hat and just just for the sake of asking questions and for the sake of conversation or trying to look intelligent. Remember, don't fool yourself, people. Don't fool yourself, friends, right? Don't fool yourself, right? It's not, you know, just be humble. Try to be learn to the virtue of humility and admit, you know, when you, when you do know and when you don't know. But at least before you ask a question, try to do your due diligence. Try to do the work first. Try to see if you can work it out first. Then ask the question, because then when the answer comes, you're able to, you've gone, you've, you've done your due diligence, you've, you've, you've checked all the boxes, and you just can't see where the answer is. So then when you ask a monk or someone or a wise person the question, you're more able to absorb the answer much quickly than, than if you didn't do the work. So the idea is there's no shortcuts. You've got to do the work yourself. Remember that. The Buddha left the palace and went and meditated and went and practiced for six years by himself. We must not forget this. Now consider that. Right? So uh, just because the Buddha realized and the teachings there, that doesn't mean that you don't work at it, that you don't have to work at it. You have to work at it. Right? You have to work at everything. Just because you, you're under a master, uh, let's say, carpenter, someone who's really diligent, you can't just show up to work and do nothing and ask a lot of questions and do nothing, right? So the, 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 the teacher will show you, okay, do this, do that, do that. Once you've done it a few thousand times, you'll start to know something. And that's the time that I start asking questions when you've got a bit of practice behind you, right? So consider this in, in, uh, in everything you do, right? So the idea is to be intelligent, but understand what intelligence is. Intelligence comes through cultivating and developing through seeing, through knowing, through practice, through doing due diligence, right, for, for, for constantly persevering with what you're doing and putting all your conviction and strength into it, right, and, and trying to come through the other side and not giving up when things get hard or difficult or confusing. You know, when you're confused, don't give up on that, right? So you try to get through that, okay? All right, may you grow in Dharma. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and share with your friends.